Have you ever experienced a moment in your life that was so painful and confusing that all you wanted to do was learn as much as you could to make sense of it all? When I was 13, a close family friend, who's like an uncle to me, passed from pancreatic cancer. And when the disease hit so close to home, I knew I needed to learn more. So I went online to find answers. And using the internet, I found a variety of statistics on pancreatic cancer. And what I had found shocked me. Over 85% of all pancreatic cancers are diagnosed late. When someone has less than a 2% chance of survival, why are we so bad at detecting pancreatic cancer? The reason our current modern medicine is a 60-year-old technique. Just think, that's older than my dad. And then also, <laughs> it costs $800 per test and is grossly inaccurate, missing 30% of all pancreatic cancers. But in addition, your doctor would have to be ridiculously suspicious that you have the cancer in order to give you this test. Learning this, I was sure there had to be a better way. So I went to my two best friends for knowledge, Google and Wikipedia, how I get through every high school test and quiz. I just start plugging in terms, and then finally, I stumble across an article. Oh, whoops, never mind, I'm not stumbling across an article quite yet. Instead, I began looking at what a sensor would have to look like in order to effectively diagnose pancreatic cancer. Essentially, the sensor would have to be inexpensive, rapid, simple, sensitive, selective, uh, sel something else, and minimally invasive. And then also, I then was wondering how I'm going to do this, and I go on Google and Wikipedia, I found this article of over 8,000 different proteins that are found in your bloodstream when you have pancreatic, ovarian, and lung cancer. And then I just began battering through it, essentially. I kind of was brute forcing it at this time. And on the 4,000th try, I found one protein. I was pretty close to losing my sanity at that point. The name of this protein was called mesotheon. And it's just your ordinary round the type mill type of protein, unless you have pancreatic, ovarian, and lung cancer. In which case, it's found at these very high levels in your bloodstream. But also, what's so cool about it is that it's found in the earliest stage, when someone has close to 100% chance of survival. And now that I found a reliable protein to detect pancreatic cancer, I have to actually focus on detecting it, because seeing a protein isn't that much useful. So then my actual like, revelation came in the most unlikely of places my high school biology class, the absolute stifler of innovation, <laughs> especially with my biology teacher. And so essentially, I'd snuck in this article on carbon nanotubes, essentially long, thin pipes of carbon that are an atom thick and 1 50,000th the diameter of your hair. And these carbon nanotubes, they have these amazing properties. They're kind of like the superheroes of material science. And so I was just reading about these amazing properties, and I was like, oh my goodness, this is so cool. And I had snuck under my desk, and I was just going away. And then I realized, like, I'm looking up, and I'm like, oh, crap, we have an assignment to do. It was on antibodies. And antibodies, these are actually kind of cool. Not as cool as carbon nanotubes. But essentially, they're molecules that only react with one specific protein. And I thought, hmm, I have a protein here, mesothelium. What if I have an antibody to mesothelium? And I'm sitting there, just rolling this around my head, and suddenly it hits me. When I'm reading about carbon nanotubes, and what I was supposed to be thinking about and writing about in the essay, antibodies could be combined. Essentially, you weave these uh, antibodies into this network of nanotubes, such that you have a network that only reacts with one specific protein. But also, due to the properties of these carbon nanotubes, this network will actually change its electrical properties based on the amount of protein present, and thus indicate the presence of pancreatic cancer. However, there's a bit of a catch here. These carbon nanotubes aren't exactly really strong like when you have a network of them. It can kind of like flick them and they break. And so essentially what you have to do is you have to support them. So that's why I choose to use paper. And making a sensor for pancreatic cancer out of paper is about as simple as making chocolate chip cookies, which I love. I mean, who doesn't love chocolate chip cookies? And essentially you start with some water, you pour in the nanotubes, add some antibodies, mix it up, you then take some filter paper, dip it, dry it, and then you can detect pancreatic cancer. However, then I have another realization. I might need a lab for this. I mean, my mom had put up with quite a lot. Like, for example, I had the cultured E. coli, where we make sand sugar. She wasn't quite happy about that. Luckily, none of us got sick. And then we made like chlorine gas in our basement, so 
it, we were doing some pretty risque stuff at our house. However, cancer research was a bit borderline there. So <laughs> I, being the teenager, I decided to kind of like go online and I found 200 professors that had anything to do with pancreatic cancer at Johns Hopkins University and the National Institutes of Health. And so I decided to just write a couple of emails off to them, 200 emails. I send them a procedure, a materialist, all this random stuff. And I can't believe they actually read that. Like one professor was like, yeah, I read all that. I'm like, that was 31 pages. I didn't think you would read that. I'm not that interesting. <laughs> However, I was like, oh, damn, I'm going to get in these labs. They're going to love me. I'm a genius. They're going to be like, you're the next Edison. Oh my god, come to my lab. <laughs> Then reality kind of took hold there, and I got 199 rejections. I was, and like, think, I have like enough, I have a hard enough time like getting rejected from like the like softball team at like gym class, like 200 rejections. I'm like, oh my god, how can you be that mean? And also, I found that um, people's pictures online they they don't really reflect their personality and how nice they are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> However, eventually, one person finally said yes. And so, well, it was more of a maybe. I was being a bit optimistic there. And eventually, I go in three months later, I go in with these giant stacks of these like 3D binders. I have like 500 plus journal articles. And I'm just like, I'm going to dominate this interview. He's going to love me. And I go in, and I sit down, and he starts like, asking me a couple of questions, and then he like, out of the corner of his eye, he like spots like this PhD student. It's kind of like a frog spying a fly. It's just like, you, get over here. And then he sees a couple more. He's like, you guys, get in here. And then like, it's kind of like this posse, like a mafia, it felt like. I'm like, oh, how much money do I owe here? But um, they just start firing these questions. There's 20 PhDs in there, and they're all just firing questions, trying to sync my procedure. I'm like, dude, I know my stuff. You're not synced this procedure. <laughs> And so I answer all their questions. And I guess on quite a few of them, guess C on everything. I got them all right. Just how I got through my SATs, guessing C. And I finally get the lab space I needed to actually do my research. And then all of a sudden, I soon realize my brilliant procedure that I thought I was Edison for, it had like a million holes in it. I'm like, oh, damn. Maybe that's why they weren't accepting me. However, over that seven-month period, I finally patch each and every hole in this procedure and end up with one small paper sensor that costs three cents and it takes five minutes to run. But also, what's so cool about it is I can detect the cancer in the earliest stage when someone has close to 100% chance of survival. And it's 168 times faster, over 26,000 times less expensive, and over 400 times more sensitive than current uh, methods for detection of pancreatic cancer. So in the next two to five years, the sensor could actually bring the survival rate of pancreatic cancer up from a dismal 5.5% to close to 100%. But it wouldn't stop there. By switching out that antibody, you could detect pretty much any disease, ranging from Alzheimer's, to HIV, AIDS, heart disease, even other forms of cancer. And so my hope for this one sensor is that we can all have that bit of extra time with that one uncle, that one parent, that one brother or sister. And then also, there's one more thing. Through this journey, I've also learned that I absolutely hate antibodies. I mean, they're the jerks of the scientific world. <laughs> they're like, oh no, I don't want to like, bind with that protein. Oh no, no, I like this protein. I'm like, um. <laughs> so now I've moved on to bigger and better things. Specifically, oh no, wrong slide. We're going to be doing, shoot, OK. What's going on here? <laughs> Uh, the future, that's where we're going. <laughs> so now I've gathered a team of all high school students to compete in the Tricorder X Prize, sponsored by the Qualcomm Foundation, for $10 million, which in my terms equals a bajillion dollars. <laughs> I'm like, hoo <laughs> hoo. And so I've gathered a team of my best friends from Intel ISAF, and we're going out this against 300 other teams of all um, adults and big corporations. And it's essentially to develop something about the size of this that you essentially pass over your skin and can diagnose any disease instantly. If any of you guys are like Star Trek fans, that's essentially what it is, a tricorder. And so we're going at this. 
And so it's going to be pretty exciting. I'm not sure really what's going to happen out of it, but hey, that's life, I suppose. <laughs> and so it's going to be exciting. That's the end conclusion there. And also there's one more thing. That through this journey, I've learned a very important lesson. <clears throat> that through the internet, anything is possible. Theories can be shared, and you don't have to be a professor with multiple degrees to have your ideas valued by others. I mean, I'm a 15-year-old. What degree do I have? High school biology, woot woot. <laughs> but um, yeah, essentially, think. I was able to develop a sensor that can detect pancreatic cancer without even knowing what a pancreas was. <laughs> using just Google and Wikipedia. <laughs> so then, okay, just imagine what you could do. There was a bit of end, yes. <laughs> end here. <laughs> Brilliant.